So the camera people need to tell me like where I need to move or can I move or whatnot. So because I hate to standing there. Um, and also you don't see my red pants then. Um, just I want to make sure that you're on the right session, right? Um, I have a very important question to you to, uh, for you to ask, okay? I need uh, full concentration for you to answer this question. How many times you heard this phrase? Anyone? <laughs> I heard this like a thousand times. When I was a consultant, when I was uh, not a consultant, works on my machine, right? It's awesome when it works on your machine, but what happens with your machine will burn. Well, you know, you can present this to the person who sell this. After the session, you don't need to run your stuff on your machine anymore. Forget about your machine. If your stuff is not running on CI server, it's probably something wrong with it. Or, you know, you can continue to run your software on your machine. After that, we need to ship this to data center, connect this, and this is how we're going to be deploying, right? So physical deployment of computers. Um, thankfully, we have a better technologies for that. Um, we can install through the packages, or we can install this using Docker. Um, containers created a new way how we're treating software, how we're distributing software, because containers provide us very important features like isolation of process isolation, resource isolation, um, dedicated file systems, so you can also have uh, stateful workloads running inside the containers, right? And uh, that's, 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 if we want to run to Kafka, that would be that simple, right? Who thinks it's, yeah, who said, ha, -ha. <laughs> He knows the thing. Essentially, when you run the Kafka in container, whoops, you need to do something like this, right? Because Kafka depends on Zookeeper still, you know, soon, soon-ish. Um, and there's some parameters that you need to set. Some parameters that you need to set for Zookeeper to start, for Kafka to start, Kafka to discover Zookeeper, they need to be running on the same network and other things. It's a minimal setup. You already saw this, it's coming, right? So today, I would like to show you the better way show you the better way how we can run and test some of the software that your application will be depend on. And it would be something simple like this, I promise. That's the only thing that you need to do to run Kafka on your laptop or your CI, right? It's much better, much, much better. My name is Viktor Gamov. I work as a principal developer advocate at Kong, cloud connectivity company. Um, ask me about Kong after. Uh, but important thing why I'm here today because I wrote a book about Kafka. One of the authors of the Kafka Connection. Book is available. It's an awesome book. There's a 35% discount. Please buy this book. <laughs> All right. So um, I like to, you know, one of the, you know, I'm reading different uh, uh, presentation techniques, uh, books, and they recommend to start with some of the wisdom and uh, like to stand on the shoulders of the giants. Who knows who is this gentleman? James Gosling, James Gosling, father of Java. And uh, James Gosling right now also embraced full cloud stuff and he joined a cloud company. He said, or at least we know that it's somehow um, attributed to him. With Java, you write once and run everywhere. Sounds familiar, right? However, what I believe that actually Docker fulfilled this promise slightly differently, but actually gives us something that we can write once and package everywhere, and after that ship it everywhere. So that's why containers created a revolution in the way how we ship software, how we develop software, and how they make the software available for everyone, okay? However, with the <laughs> great power comes great pain. You can run this, and I show this, you can run this docker run hello world, and it will work. Simple application, but uh, in our life, we don't have simple applications. In our life, we have a complex applications, depend on other systems. And I brought this idea of running this on the local computer, not for, for giggles and like lulz. It's important because when you're running stuff like docker on your machine, you might run not only one container, you can run multiple containers. And there's some, com some pains comes with the, for example, port is not available. Now you need to find a container that runs this port and uh, shut it down. How you would 
you know, deal with this type of stuff. Easy. We need to pick up different ports. We're running um, multiple different applications. We're running, I don't know, Spring Boot. How many of you run at least like a two, three instances of Spring Boot application and had this all the time? Port already in use. Unless you're using server port equals zero. In this case, Spring Boot does port organization. So that's important because when you're running this stuff in the container or using Docker Compose, you have predefined port to application to connect to. In order to make this um, more usable or when you're running multiple different things, um, you need to make sure that this port randomized. Um, when we have a Docker Compose, we use the Docker Compose a lot. How many of you heard about developer.confluent.io? Developer.confluent.io. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a great website to learn all things Kafka. And one of the like foundational beats how we, when we build this website, um, we wanted you to have the same stack that we developed on running on your machine. So that's why we ship it with Docker Compose. The lot of, um, uh, there's a Kafka, there's a Keeper, there's Scheme Registry, there's SQL DB. It's one Docker Compose. You can just like copy and paste it. It's great for demos like this. However, if you need to run multiple scenarios like this, you have these Docker Composes pre-configured. Some of you might uh, be a guru of the common line tools like set, grab, and things like that and write small scripts that will replay this. Or maybe you even guru of things like, I don't know, uh, uh, YQL, like YQ. It's a kind of like a JQ, but for YAML. Um, what about we, we can bring something that we have, at least I had in Groovy for years with the Spock testing framework, like a data-driven tests. Now, thanks to JUnit 5, we have a data-driven test. And let's see how we can use those for our test scenarios. And most importantly, some tests are slow. There's a couple of ways how we can solve this. Again, if it runs your machine, you need a beefy machine to run this test. Or you can uh, find a bigger machine to run your tests. Uh, maybe this bigger machine would be available on CI. Um, or you can do something with parallelization. Or maybe even deploy it in a, uh, in a parallel as running on multiple VMs. So think about this. Think about this for, for a second, and I will get back to you at the end of this presentation. Uh, it's not secret that we're going to be talking about test containers. Uh, how many of you heard about test containers before this presentation? Okay, so I'm done then. So um, I don't know why, why I'm even here. So, okay, for those of you who don't know, because not everyone uh, um, brought uh, their uh, hands up, test containers started as a Java-only library uh, to use reusable containers to test your applications. Right now, it's not limited only to Java. There's a Go versions. There is a... Uh, uh, plenty other languages, I don't know. I'm using Java and Go only, so, uh, but there's a .NET available thing, um, .NET developers in the room? Yeah, a few. So yes, for you also, uh, there's a .NET version of uh, test container. So, and the ecosystem of um, uh, bindings for languages are just growing. Um, if we go to uh, test containers organization GitHub, you will find uh, plenty of libraries that are available for whatever language you're using. Um, people love uh, when the technologies will be praised by some uh, the very important uh, publication. How many of you are using the tech radar from uh, uh, ThoughtWorks? It's awesome. It's great. And the test containers are already there. And, uh, you know, you can start adopt test containers together with JUnit. I don't know <laughs> why JUnit um, is not also here. But the JUnit 5, probably. Um, and uh, this is the, some, some of the quotes from this. It it's a, should be a default option for adopting for your testing. Okay? Okay. Um, in this case, I will show you how you can start doing stuff with the, with the Kafka. Okay, let's see some code. Yep, that's, uh, let's, uh, that's why you're here, right? Um, let's start with something simple. Um, if you remember, I promised you that I will show you how you can run Kafka just with one command. Um, and we'll start with something like this. So first of all, uh, this stuff will be relying on test containers Kafka. This is something that test container ships out of the box. Uh, Kafka container is a part of uh, test containers library. So this library relying on uh, CP Kafka container, which is uh, provided by Confluent. So it's also a default option 
for everyone who wants to use Kafka in containers. All right. So um, this is the foundation for um, for today's presentation and for today's demos and all these kind of things. Um, it also this particular component knows how to run with Zookeeper, so you don't need to if you don't want to create your own Zookeeper. If you want to, you can provide the Zookeeper. There is a um, API how we can do this. Um, and essentially, that's the only thing that you need to do. Um, you specify the image, um, and uh, the, the system will take care of the rest. Um, it's already pre-configured to using some of the uh, configuration parameter that Confluent Images uses, uh, is used. Um, and um, today we're gonna talk about a little bit about extension of this. Uh, we're going to be taking some other components from Confluent Platform and use this with uh, test containers. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you can use either uh, existing Zookeeper that you have, or you can uh, provide uh, whatever image you need to. So I'm going to start with a small test that is um, CP test. So uh, it's going to be using the, the Confluent server. Um, and one of the things that I said in the very beginning um, is port randomization, like how this will help us to uh, with this with this type of approach. So when I run this test, and um, the uh, this is kind of like a big thing, it's going to be running on this computer um, relatively 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 fast, but I still need to like bring some images and things like that. Please be patient um, with this. With this Kafka that we will be running, we're running like a Confluent, uh, Confluent server um, that already exposes some information on the, um, the, on the rest side of things. We want to make sure that we're running this right thing here. Um, it's uh, the pulling up some, uh, some images. Yeah, it's, a, it's sad that uh, this particular image is like a sort of enormous. Uh, hopefully, uh, if someone from Confluent also here, you can fix this, please. One gigabyte. Um, one gigabyte image, it's, uh, it's a lot. Because, again, stay till the end, I'll show you some interesting developments in the world of uh, Kafka containers. Um, so it's, it's uh, brought the container uh, down from the internet, uh, start the uh, container locally, and uh, you, know, you can use whatever library uh, you want to use. In this particular case, uh, I'm using uh, REST Assured for testing like a web, uh, web stuff. Um, and I'm using the assert J for um, for testing. And now, like when it's when it's up, we have some of some of the library that uh, I will mention in a, in a few few seconds. This library already provides you some of the basic functionality that you can start doing things. So when I run this, and you can see where's my uh, HTTP output of this uh, request. Give me a second. So that's the output from. That's the output from this uh, like a REST call of the um, metadata. As you can see here, now Kafka port is not what you expected. You probably expected it should be something around like a zero or nine zero nine two, but it's something like this. So test containers can run this multiple same containers on the same machine without you messing with the ports. And you might be running this like locally already, and this port will be occupied. But test containers will make sure that this random port will um, will be available uh, for, for you to, 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 get the, uh, to get the data. So in order to get this, in order to get this in your application, um, uh, like actual test, uh, actual uh, URL and actual port, um, you need to use the methods uh, on the container. So for example, if I go here, there should be something like get map ports. So I'll show you in uh, Kafka, Kafka container. In the Kafka container, there is a method called to do, do, do get bootstrap servers. So this get bootstrap servers always will return to you the port that you need to connect your application uh, in order to test this. Um, and the way how it's done, there is API for uh, get the map port. So you're defining like what kind of or your image already defined what kind of port this exposes, um, you, and you can connect to this one. Now. The second thing that I mentioned in, uh, in my slides is the thing about um, um, the data-driven data, data tests. Um, it's a uh, ability to not only use uh, kind of like uh, the hard-coded values, but uh, like provide some of the data sets and run the tests against this data set 
that would be a cool feature if you need to test, say, multiple versions of Kafka or test your application against multiple versions of Kafka. And uh, for that, uh, we do have this um, multi-version test. Um, multi-version test, uh, it's a JUnit test, and we're using this uh, uh, idea of the parameterized tests. And uh, we supply this method with the factory that will be providing version. And essentially, this is, with, this is how we run um, the test against multiple versions of, um, of open source Kafka, against the Confluent server, and against the Confluent server with the RBAC enabled. So let's, uh, let's run this in uh, just, just a vanilla Kafka and see how it will work. So for each version of this test, this would be executed against the real software. Again, it's important to understand this is a real software, real image that you're running. So in case of using the, you using this stuff in your, um, in your production, um, uh, you running this against the containers or running against the, uh, the managed service that provides you particular Kafka version, you will make sure that your stuff running against the right version. So you, you should be able to run this um, without any problems. So, and for each test, we will have uh, its own results. So in this particular case, this test was successfully executed for, let me do this uh, remote presentation mode. Yeah, so um, in this case, I'm running this test against all possible versions because I want to make sure that it runs on, my software runs against those versions. So, and this will stuff will continue to run and run and run and run. So, and uh, we're going to be using some of the um, some of the, let me, yeah, with the bigger screen, it's much difficult to, to operate with. Um, and for a parallelization, um, Gradle will be able to, um, where's the Gradle, the properties? Okay, so there's a, there's a uh, test configuration that allows me to run this with the, um, the multiple forks. So Gradle allows me to run those tests in parallel. That will significantly improve um, um, improve the application. Since those tests were not interfere with each other, so there would be no port conflicts, there would be nothing uh, against the other things. So that's the, uh, that's the essence of these um, uh, test containers for, for Kafka. What if you don't have a Docker? How many of you have um, been in a situation where you were not sure what you need to do since the Docker announced this, uh, depre not deprecation, <laughs> They actually start asking for money from uh, developers on the desktop and saying, yeah, the, uh, the, the Docker desktop uh, will require like a license. So that's one of the options why they have a Docker. Another option, um, you're running on the computers where the Docker is not available. Like how are you still are running your tests? Um, the, the good folks from the Atomic Jar, uh, which is a company behind the test containers, they kind of like a, the, created the company so they can contribute to test containers like a full time. Good, good guys. Um, they wrote this blog post about like evaluating what is available for developers today if they want to kind of like drop the uh, <laughs> and don't use uh, Docker desktop. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of still sad. Um, some of the solutions work, some of the solutions work 50% of the time, some solutions don't work. So. Um, there's, it, it's, it's, you, you make it work. Um, it can be more or less painful or less painful. Some of the tools will be evolved. Uh, for example, I know that uh, for the, for the, there's another tool, um, Kalima or something like that. So yeah, that's a situation not, not fun. However, what if, like you running your GitHub actions in the cloud and uh, there will be cloud runner that will be running your code. That's one of the options. But what if you can use this similar stuff that I'm showing to you, like running local, but it will be running on someone else's computer. So, like a serverless, serverless CI system. So, that's uh, what the test containers cloud is. And um, let's see more code. So, um, you might not notice this, but I running those uh, tests. Oops, it's a, it's a long one. I wanted to show you this one. Um, I'm running those tests right now. See, all the tests are up and running on the computer that doesn't have Intel processor. 
And if you ever try to run CP Kafka or Confluence server on computer that doesn't have Intel processor or ARM computer, you probably also fell like I feel, like sad, because I couldn't. And uh, there's some of the developments, this, I know some, some, uh, some people in community, for example, Honeycomb were building their own ARM images, so we're still waiting from, from Confluent to get ARM images. And I was thinking, okay, so what I can do this? I still wanna do a cool demos, I wanna still wanna do uh, like a build my stuff. And uh, all this time, all this time, I actually was running this against uh, Test Containers Cloud. So what does it mean? So in this case, I, in somewhere in the cloud, somewhere else computer, somewhere else paying for this, but my test, my Kafka uh, um, Docker images are running there, and I'm just getting only responses from, from this. So tested, uh, test, uh, tests are executed somewhere, um, and now I'm happy. So that's the, uh, the test containers cloud, um, and you know, you, you need to put the, uh, the Dwight Schrute uh, GIF when the demo went successfully and no one noticed this. So that's pretty cool. So it's, um, it's not only for, uh, for CI when you need to run this on, uh, on some other computers, but like I said, for developer purposes, um, you need to um, say running and testing against like uh, images that are not available on your platform. That's very powerful. For me as a developer, it was very powerful and very, uh, very useful. So I could not um, uh, work on this demo. Some, some of the images work fine with the uh, with emulation. You can take these images and they were running in, uh, in uh, Rosetta and everything is gonna be fine. But in this particular case, that was, um, that was, a, that was a pretty cool deal. Um, also, I can run this in, um, in my CI. So I will show you Say I have it now. I have another project. So, with this project, I have um, this cloud. That's my GitHub action. How many of you heard about GitHub actions and using this every day? Good. So you're already learning something that you don't need to run your uh, your your stuff on your laptop anymore, right? So we're running this on CI. So um, I have a GitHub action that's set up to uh, to use the test container cloud. So in this case, it's just like uh, creating some agent that will be listening. Essentially, what it does, it swaps the um, uh, Docker has a protocol that your Docker app talks to Docker daemon, and uh, it swaps the um, the listening port, so your, all your Docker applications will work successfully with this Docker server, but they will be connected to uh, some, of the, uh, some of the remote system. Uh, it's not full-blown uh, implementation of Docker da daemon, so you cannot use this as a kind of like a replacement of the Docker desktop, for example. However, it works great for test and test container. So that's, uh, that's where I'm running my, uh, my tests, so the, those tests will be executed against, um, against the cloud um, CI. All right, couple more things. So um, I started this project uh, some time ago uh, because I wanted to, um, uh, don't take a picture of this, I just put this for reference because the next slide would be important to take a picture. So this is, uh, this is this how it started when we, building, uh, we were building developer.confluent.io and I wanted to have a little bit uh, more automation against the, in the automatic testing. If you ever, look at the developer.confluent.io or like you will look today after this talk, I hope, um, you will find that um, pretty much every tutorial that we have there is uh, uh, CI, uh, CI tested. Uh, there was the idea of this, uh, uh, creating the website where tutorials will be evergreen. Um, or like you can check my uh, presentation from, I don't know, last year uh, or the year before, but I don't know, like two years past and I don't remember which was 21st and which one was 20th. Um, I did the presentation where I talk about like how we, uh, how we use the, um, uh, how we test this developer.confluent.io and how we test some of the Kafka stuff there. Um, and that's, that's where I created this. And uh, probably like if I go into my uh, fork or my developer.confluent.io, if it's still there, where is it? Okay, if I'll just do Kafka tutorials, see, I still have it on my laptop. If I'll just do something like find the test containers, so test containers still running somewhere there, so that's, that's pretty exciting. And one of the things that um, what I wanted to use it for is, um, is to substitute uh, kind of like a stub, um, like 
if you ever tested your uh, Kafka Streams application, for example, you know that uh, Kafka Streams ships with the testing uh, facility that you use for some of the you know, mock runner uh, to test some of your stuff. But I wanted to test my application against the real schema registry. So that's how I started this project and why I'm saying, okay, so there's a Kafka, there's a schema registry image, so I will just write the wrapper. So, um, and this stuff evolved a little bit into a project that, uh, that's what you're uh, gonna be using. So. We're gonna be looking into this project right now. It's called uh, this containers all the things Kafka because it will have not only Kafka. It will have schema registry, it will have a container, ski SQL, Confluence server, and a little bit more um, that, um, that you will be, uh, will be able to use. It's on GitHub. Um, actually, this project was started by another Confluent uh, engineer. He is a solution architect uh, from, uh, from Germany. Um, Christoph Schubert, he uh, started the, another kind of project and after that we you know, collaborated and just, okay, let's, uh, uh, let's join forces and build something that will be useful for everyone. Um, there's also a project with examples. So some of the tests that are um, uh, running in the, in the core project we will be you know, gradually migrate. Um, for example, uh, there would be some examples with some I don't know, external, external connectors like Splunk or connectors to S3 and some other things. So we're gonna be moving it there. So uh, it's gonna be github.com slash test all the things, uh, test containers all the thing Kafka. And this is what you will get there. So once you get this into, um, into this, you will get some of the cool things that you can use. Okay, so let me show you. Um, pretty much all containers that people are using these days, they're here. So there is a uh, one uh, you know test container factory that you can use as entry point that way to to everything. So you can go and use this for. So you can create Kafka, you can create Confluence server, you can create Kafka Connect, you can create um, some custom connector where you can ship the um, some of the details. Um, and uh, you can create a schema registry, a REST proxy, like all enchilada. So in, um, in this case, let's, uh, let's see some, some, of the, some of the cool tests. Uh, for example, if we go in into, let's see how the connector, um, Kafka connect container tests, and how this looks like. So those tests are in integration test folder, as they should. And I will go in into, uh, where's the connector, connector. Let's, let's start with schema registry. So with the schema registry, there's a couple things needs to happen first. Um, in, uh, in CP test container factory, we create in Kafka, we're creating in schema registry. So that's important to understand. Those two containers need to be running on the same network and the Docker, um, uh, uh, Docker and the test containers allows us to create this. So uh, underneath the network would be created um, implicitly. So you don't need to you know, do this extra step. Next, um, once, once you're done, you have a running Kafka, you have running schema registry, and now you can do whatever you please. You can, you can run your streams application against this, you can run um, your just a similar uh, Kafka producer consumer. And uh, in this library, we also have some of the kind of like basic, uh, basic uh, components to interact with this. There's some test clients, you can have a client against um, uh, just regular producer consumer, you can do uh, the Avro producer and consumer, so all these things are, are supported as well. So if we go into some examples and we take a look on so Avro producer consumer test. So in this test I am uh, using the Gradle plugin that reads the Avro schema generate Java Pojo. I can use this Java Pojo in this test and after that I'm using the, uh, the consumer and producer um, that will be writing to this application. Actually, let's see if it, if it runs, let's see. It will start this. Now you know that uh, the startup might be, uh, uh, why it might be like slow because, you know, internet. So that's the, uh, the magic. Like nothing runs on the computer. If the computer will break down, it still will be somewhere on the internet. Um, and it will be running in my, uh, in my CI server as well. Uh, while it is running, 
while it is running, let's um, let's ad address some other interesting uh, components that we have here. Um, what about connect? So I'm going into this particular test. It's actually pretty cool if you think about this. So it actually includes uh, multiple other components. It has a Kafka, scheme registry, connector. It has a connector uh, data gen. So you can also use this for your integration test to generate your testing, uh, uh, some payload for your test, or like your QA engineers can use this. Um, and uh, here, we're also uh, using KSQL DB. So like four components in like four lines of code. Um, and now, we can create a custom uh, connector. We need to specify URL from um, uh, Confluent Hub, from hub, the Confluent IO slash hub, to get the connector from this hub. So we're using the data gen connector. Um, there is a uh, DSL for configuring this connector. So the, even you're using this for your test, it would be easier for you to, to set up uh, because it's, uh, uh, the connect is known. Uh, for the, the configuration is already known for this component, so you just simply take this and use this in your um, in your code. And after that, again, same libraries you can use to uh, see if there's enough uh, uh, enough data that we produce, um, and so far and so on. And uh, let's um, let us run this as well. While I was talking, uh, while I was talking, we successfully executed this uh, test producer that successfully populated some of the data. Um, in here, see there's some of the movies, um, and the movies are successfully populated into Kafka. We read this data from Kafka, and all, um, all good. And now we're going back to um, test containers. It's executed, uh, it's still working, yeah, so it, it takes some time to, to, to pull the image. Like the one gigabyte over internet is not a joke, right? All right, so, um, Check this out, play around this, like hit me up in Twitter, hit me up in GitHub, like if you uh, wanna see something that comes there. Um, even though I'm not working right now on Kafka actively, I still kind of uh, around the Kafka community and helping with all these uh, sort of integrations. And uh, to answer the question that you might have in the, in the room, or might not, is there a connector for Kong? Yes, there is a connector for Kong. If you wanna know about Kong, talk to me after. And one more thing. You guys love it, this, right? It you know, always works like this. Okay, so one more thing. Um, like, I wanna bring the, uh, where is it? Yeah, I wanna bring this radar once again. And um, it was interesting that uh, one of the issues of the radar brought this interesting thing, that assess possibility of having Kafka API as not only, you know, access to Kafka, but in general, how to be like a universal API for accessing these streaming systems, right? And uh, some of the people took this idea to extreme. Uh, they implemented uh, the Kafka in the different languages, implemented Kafka in the different systems. There is a Pulsar uh, subsystem for Kafka. There is a Red Panda, which is implementation of Kafka protocol uh, in an absolutely different language. So I was thinking, okay, now, it's a great example how you can test this integration between the systems that claim to have like a Kafka API compatibility, right? So, um, so that's why I just took this um, into, um, into the game and uh, talk to, uh, talk to the Samsung folks. There's a, a container for, uh, for Red Panda that will be using the same thing as uh, Red. We'll be using same clients to produce and consume data from Kafka. Let's see uh, if it works, if this will work. Again, it also, uh, like right now, tests are configured to use, um, to use um, um, test container cloud. Oh wow, it's done. Why is that? Because the image is tiny. The image is super small. It's not one gigabyte. <laughs> yeah, and it works like the same Kafka application produced and consumed and uh, you can come up with your own scenarios if you're relating these type of solutions. Um, you can use this library to um, run your system against multiple different cloud providers maybe um, and uh, it works kind of if they provide. I know like, for example, Google Cloud provides some of the um, uh, some of the services that they deploy in the Google Cloud as a managed services. They provide this as a Docker images. You can use this 
um, here. Well, we also have example, um, we use example, um, uh, we use example with local stack. So local stack is a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool technology. It's uh, also implementations of um, cloud services, but also in container. So we do have um, integration tests uh, for uh, local stack. So the local stack in this case uh, provides integration between, that's actually, this test includes uh, tests against the pipeline. So it has a S3, a connector, it has data gen, data gen push the data into Kafka, uh, connector reads this and push this in S3 in one, one line of code. You don't need to write uh, custom scripts to test this. I think it's awesome, no? Awesome, <laughs> cool. All right, so uh, to sum up, you can continue to deploy and test with boring scripts, uh, writing your make files, YAML files, uh, like working on your Kung Fu around the uh, shell programming and stuff, or you can use, you can explore beautiful world of test containers with Kafka, with other components. And most importantly, always be testing. Make sure that you're not running your tests on your laptop. Make sure that if your laptop will die, someone will be able to pick up this work from CI, from the version control. And with this, my name is Viktor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day. <laughs>